uplifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Start the video? I didn't turn it on to say that that's the last song. Oh, okay. I just turned it on. Oh, cool. It would be on when you got ready to. Okay. Let's do one more. These are the days of Elijah. There's the words of the Lord. These are the days of your servant Moses. Righteous be restored. These are the days of great trials, famine and darkness and sword. We are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, the year to be. Out of Zion, salvation come. These are the days of Ezekiel. Tribal becoming his flesh. These are the days of your servant David. Rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. Deals are what is the world. We are your labors in your vineyard, declaring the words of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice, a year to be out of Zion, salvation come. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, Can you ask me if I, I was doing what I go? I said better than this morning. I tell you, I think the devil deliberately decided to attack me this morning. I had a tooth pulled Friday a week ago. That thing ought to be over by now. But this morning, when I was getting ready to what I was teaching and preaching, that drum got to hurt and clear back up to my ear. And the only thing I could concentrate on is hard to concentrate on the mess in it. And I told Lois, I no more than walked in the house and I said, my tooth is quit hurting. Crazy, Crazy thing's not hurting at all. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I uh, just uh, attributed to uh, Satan. Uh, anyway, hey, if you have your Bibles, I, I'm not going to preach much tonight. Um, uh, try to stay light. Uh, but turn in your Bibles, if you will, to John 11th chapter. Very familiar text. Probably all of you uh, know it. Um, uh, Jesus uh, has just arrived at Lazarus' funeral. And um, there in verse 23, uh, Martha said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother uh would not have died. Jesus said, uh, Martha, your brother will live again. He, she said, I know that he will live in the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me, though he, um, uh, and he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. You know, right there in a moment. Um, but uh, I, I was uh, reading it this afternoon and I, I thought, you know, uh, what is the meaning of the risen life? What does it mean to us? Uh, the fact that, uh, hey, uh, we're going to rise again. Uh, we, we, you know, they uh, sing that song, um, uh, we're going to rise. And um, uh, notice, uh, got to thinking about it, six uh, things uh, that uh, came to my mind as I was singing about oh. Uh, what is involved? What uh, what does uh, this this 
rising uh, consists of. And uh, as I got to thinking about it, first of all, uh, it, it involves a uh, new a inward power, a new inward power. Uh, if you want to turn in your Bibles to Romans 8, and um, uh, look at verse 11 there, uh, and uh, Paul writing there, he said, If the Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, then that Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies also. Um, and um, let me find it here. Um, uh, shall quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. And I was thinking about that power there in Ephesians chapter 2 or in Ephesians chapter 1 uh, in his prayer for the Ephesians there after praying that they might know what is the hope of his calling and what is the uh, riches of the inheritance of his uh, the riches of his grace, the inheritance of the saints there. In, in verse um, uh, 19, I believe it is, he says there, uh, uh, and the exceeding greatness of his power, uh, which um, uh, worketh in us, the, the uh, exceeding riches of his power in us who believe, uh, and um, uh, talk about the fact that it is the same power there, uh, he says in verse 20 there, that uh, that wrath or that raised, that worked in raising Christ from the dead. And uh, of course in Acts 1.8 he says there that um, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us, um, we will receive power and uh, we shall be witnesses for him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other most parts of the earth. So uh, uh, when we read that, you know, that uh, Jesus rose again, and uh, we read there uh, uh, what he has to say to Martha. Uh, we can uh, apply that to our own lives as well. Uh, uh, there, a, uh, if the Spirit dwells in us that raised up Christ from the dead, uh, then uh, that same Spirit uh, that dwells in us will also raise us up uh, unto new life there. And uh, will help us to have power to witness, as Brother Kenny was talking about this morning, uh, uh, and just be uh, for the Sunday school lesson, or just before after the message, one or the other there. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, by the power that we have at our disposal, if we but use it for His glory and His honor. And then, if you look at Second Corinthians chapter four in verse ten. Uh, uh, another one of the advantages, another one of the features of, of rising with Christ um, is that uh, uh, he says there that uh, always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, uh, that he that, that the life um, of Christ might uh, dwell uh, in us. I believe he says there. Uh, uh, and turn over reading, but uh, uh, we take on that Christ likeness. Um, let me let me turn over there real quick and read it there and get it right um, in Second Corinthians chapter two verse four. Um, and um, because of the fact that uh, that um, uh, Christ's Spirit lives within us, the fact that one of these days we're going to rise again, uh, it um, it uh, should cause us. And I trust it has caused you to take on that new likeness thereof. I said uh, two, actually, chapter four, verse uh, ten. It says here, um, um, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. For we which live are always delivered unto death. For Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. And, and so, not only uh, the fact that we're going to uh, that that um, uh, we're going to experience that resurrected body, uh, uh, we don't have to wait till the resurrection for it to take effect in our lives. Uh, uh, the moment the Holy Spirit comes in, we have a new inward power, and. Um, uh, Paul praying later for the Ephesians in chapter 3 there, uh, he prays there that they might be uh, uh, strengthened by might through his spirit in the inner man. 
Uh, and then uh, we have that Christ likeness that we're to take on the very fact that uh, the Spirit dwells in us. Uh, uh, it causes us to take on that Christ likeness. And then there's a devotion to a new master uh, in, in St. Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Uh, um, St. Corinthians 5 is, uh, I think, probably my favorite New Testament chapter. Just uh, every verse in it uh, is uh, has a special meaning. There in 14, uh, uh, Paul says there, The love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And uh, verse 15 says, and that he died for all, that they which live uh, should no longer live unto themselves, but live unto him who uh, died for us and who rose again. And so, uh, or who loved us and died for us, uh, uh, however it goes there uh, in the last part there. But, um, uh, and then goes right into verse 17 uh, uh, there that uh, we're that new creature in Christ Jesus uh, all because of the fact that the Spirit of God uh, that raised up Jesus, that's going to raise us up, he says in Romans 6, uh, uh, gives us a new devotion uh, to Christ um, and um, uh, hopefully uh, puts in our hearts that desire uh, to, uh, to um, uh, no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for us and who rose again. And then, um, not only is there that new inward power, that Christ-likeness, that devotion to a new master, but uh, there's that heavenly ambition. Uh, uh, Colossians, uh, another uh, tremendous uh, book, especially one and three. Uh, uh, but there in three, he said, if, uh, you know, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand um, of the Father or the throne high there. And so uh, uh, if indeed uh, we have been risen with Christ, uh, if indeed uh, um, um, Christ is uh, living in us, one of these days uh, uh, it's going to um, take on, uh, our, I trust us in one of these days, uh, trust it already has, uh, a new ambition there, uh, a, a desire uh, to go to heaven. I was talking uh, this afternoon, Tryman's, uh, uh, my next to my oldest brother, uh, who used to be director of our home mission department, uh, his wife called me this afternoon and uh, uh, wanted me to give her the number of a friend of ours. And uh, anyway, um, uh, she is... Uh, uh, dying with cancer and uh, Opal wanted to call her and, and uh, uh, comfort her I'm sure but uh, anyway uh, I mentioned to the fact that uh, uh, she's decided to do chemo and uh, uh, it's easy for us to say what we would do if we're not in their place but I hope the Lord uh, uh, and I'm confident uh, that uh, if uh, I get in that situation, uh, uh, keep the chemo, uh, let me go to heaven. Uh, uh, I have a ambition, uh, a desire uh, to uh, uh, go to heaven, and I, I'm ready to go anytime that anytime uh, he uh, sees fit to give me a call. I'm ready to answer the phone. Amen. <laughs> uh, and uh, but Paul said, uh, if he didn't be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the throne of high. And then verse 2 follows that up there. Set your affections. Uh, uh, when we uh, have truly experienced the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that uh, uh, we have that hope uh, of rising uh, with him. Uh, we take on that likeness. We uh, become ever more devoted and and. Uh, uh, Heaven uh, becomes not just a place to sing about, but a place uh, we're looking forward to uh, going to. Uh, uh, then um, we should set our affections on things above and not on things on the earth. Uh, and um, I don't know of a thing on this earth that could even, uh, the, the, the greatest thing upon this earth couldn't even come close to the 
worse thing, if there is possibly a worse thing in heaven. Uh, uh, and uh, so our affections ought to be, uh, uh, if, if indeed we've been risen with Christ, we're to see those things which are above, we're to set our affections on things above. I, I, I think that probably many Christians... Uh, and, and I don't know what many Christians do other than to observe their, uh, you know, interest or lack of interest and so forth. Uh, but, but I'm afraid that many Christians uh, fail to know the joy, to experience the joy, to, to rest in that comfort and that assurance who has totally uh, abandoned any fear of death. Uh, uh, those that... Uh, uh, those that, that, that do that uh, surely have set their affections on things above. And those who are uh, so involved in trying to accumulate things down here uh, evidently uh, have not spent the time thinking about, the time meditating upon, the time uh, trying to envision, uh, imagine, as the songwriter said, uh, uh, what God has in store for us. And then there's that exaltation, uh, and, and I think this comes, you know, there in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, it says there, for we're saved by grace, that God has saved us by his grace, and has caused us to sit together in heavenly places with him, that in the ages to come, he might shew unto us the exceeding riches of his grace. And so when I think about, uh, uh, you know, Jesus says to Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. They that believe in me, uh, if they're dead, they're going to live again. And if, uh, and, uh, if uh, they're still alive, they're never going to die. Uh, I get, uh, uh, he's saying there to Martha, just a, uh, uh, learn the meaning of the resurrection uh, uh, the power that comes, the Christ-likeness, the devotion to the Master, the heavenly ambition, uh, the heavenly affection, and then that exaltation of heavenly places. One of these days, uh, uh, you know, I, I think in the in the uh, earthly side, maybe, or lack of a better word there, lack of a better term there, uh, we get to experience momentarily uh, times down here when we get along we get to meditating upon God and and we uh, get to uh, we enter into his presence and we just know that he is uh, that he is there uh, we sit together in heavenly places with him down here momentarily for a minute think about it uh, for an endless eternity we're going to be able to sit together with him in heavenly places uh, as he shows unto us and shows unto us all the riches of his grace. When you look at some of the wonder of what God has created down here, this uh, little YouTube here, uh, uh, every time I turn it on, another picture, photo of some element of earth here, some of God's wonder, uh, comes on the screen. And uh, uh, I can only imagine what God has in store for us. So what is the meaning of the risen life? A, it's inward power. It's Christ-likeness. It's devotion to a new master. It's heavenly ambition. It's heavenly affection. And then it's exaltation to a heavenly place. And uh, as you go throughout this week, uh, uh, you might meditate upon that psalm. I think it'll, I think it'll bless you. I think uh, if you uh, carry a heavy load, uh, it'll lighten the load for you. If uh, you'll uh, but spend some time just thinking about, hey, we are going to rise. We're going to uh, be raised up together with Him, and. Uh, uh, what we have to look forward to. Uh, uh, you know, there in Hebrews chapter 12, just kind of come down, but uh, it says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 there that um, uh, seeing that we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, uh, and uh, I used to kind of think and imagine there he, that Jesus is thinking about all the people that's going to be saved uh, as a result of his uh, uh, bearing the cross, despising the shame thereof. Uh, but uh, here more recently, uh, as I was reading that or maybe quoting it, I, an, another thought came to me, and, and that is over there in John 17, where Jesus says, Father, I have finished the work you gave me to do. Now, a, so a glorify thy me with that glory which shall be mine, uh, or which was mine in the beginning. Uh, and so whether Jesus is able to bear the cross, despising the shame thereof, and set down at the right hand of the Father, uh, uh, the fact that he's thinking that all the souls are going to be saved because he paid their price uh, there on Calvary and made it possible for him to endure that, made it possible for him to say, there in the garden, not my will, but thy will be done. Uh, whether it was a, the all of those uh, that are going to be saved, because of the fact that he paid the price. Or uh, whether it's a fact that is once, as soon as he paid that price, then uh, his work here is finished and he gets to go back uh, to that same glory that was his in the beginning there. And uh, I think either one uh, could be a motivating factor. Uh, to give him the strength and the grace to uh, uh, to endure the cross and to despise the shame, but nonetheless to stay put until uh, God's justice was satisfied. Fathers, we come to you tonight. We just thank you. God, uh, what a joy in reading your word and, and God meditating thereupon. And God just... Lord, with the fight nightness, God, of our little minds down here, God, just trying to imagine, uh, God, what you have for us. And it's not all imagining. For God, we read in your word that uh, you have a crown of light for us, that you have an inheritance reserved for us, that there we're going to inherit all things, uh, uh, God, how exciting is the thought that one day we'll lay this body down and we'll take on that heavenly body that you have for us, as Paul talked about there in uh, the first part of chapter 5 of St. Corinthians. Just, Lord, help us, Father, to, uh, Lord, keep our minds and our thoughts, Lord, upon heavenly things. Help us to set our affections up. Help us to see that which is above. God, that we might know the blessings that you have for us while we walk through this life here. Thank you for all that you are, Father. In everything we give you praise, glory, and honor in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand. Anybody have anything you want to share or add?